Welcome to the CSI Las Vegas Intern Training Program. This course will help you prepare for actual field work by teaching you how to navigate your environment, collect and process evidence, use the lab equipment, question suspects, and get information from your fellow CSIs. To exit the training, press the Start button to bring up the in-game options menu, then select Exit to Main Menu. This is the CSI Morgue. Al Robbins will always be here to help you conduct the post-mortem examination for any investigation that has a victim. For now, we will use the objects on his table to show you how to examine evidence and how to use your forensic tools. To move closer to the table area, use the left analog stick. To scan the table area, use the right analog stick. To examine potential evidence, look towards any of the objects on the table, and when the message, Investigate Closer, appears, press the X button to get a closer look. While in this view, you can use the right analog stick to look at the item from different angles. Sometimes this will reveal evidence hidden from view. To return to the previous screen, press the triangle button. Back up now. Now let's learn to use the tools. Again, examine one of the pieces of evidence on the table. When you're close enough to use a forensic tool from your kit, a message will appear in the lower part of the screen. Pressing the X button when it is visible will bring up the Tool menu. Tools are categorized into either Collection or Detection tools. For a simple description of each tool, highlight it and read the tip on the upper side of the screen. For a more detailed description of each tool, press the Square button. Press the Triangle button to back out of the Tool menu. When you're close enough to use a forensic tool from your kit, a message will appear in the lower part of the screen. Pressing the X button when it is visible will bring up the Tool menu. You can use the tweezers in your Collection Tool tab to collect most small bits of evidence. Highlight the tweezers and press the X button. Then pick up the item by pressing the X button when directly over it. Evidence you collect is added to your evidence folder and categorized as either traits, documents, or items. Sometimes evidence has even more evidence on it. In these cases, you can apply your tools directly to the evidence from this view. To inspect the item for more evidence, rotate the object in the viewer by moving the right analog stick. If you suspect there may be more evidence on it, press the circle button to switch to collect mode. Be sure to check each item thoroughly. Usually, this kind of evidence is hard to see. The descriptions of the evidence will often update throughout the case, so check them regularly. Select an evidence icon and press the X button to see it in the evidence viewer. To review what you know about it, press the square button. You can use the fingerprint powder in the Detection Tool Category tab to dust for fingerprints on smooth surfaces, like this one. To dust a piece of evidence for fingerprints, highlight the fingerprint powder and press the X button to use it. Then, while repeatedly pressing the X button, move the brush over the surface to fully reveal the print.
Once you have revealed the print using powder, you can collect it with the Adhesive Tape tool. Highlight the Adhesive Tape from your Collection Tools menu and press the X button to equip it. Then place the tape over the fingerprint and press the X button to collect it. You can use a digital camera from your collection tool category tab to collect visual evidence, such as bruises or spatter patterns. You can also use it to document important configurations of the crime scene, such as the victim's body position. When investigating a piece of evidence, the message Open Toolkit will appear at the lower part of the screen. Press the X button to bring up your tools. Select the digital camera from the collection tools and press the X button to snap the photo. You can use the gloves in your collection tool category tab to collect larger pieces of evidence. Select the gloves, press the X button to equip them, then pick up the item by moving the gloves over it and pressing the X button. You have completed all required tasks in this location. This is a CSI lab. Here you can perform analyses on your evidence once you prepare it. First, you'll learn to navigate the lab and other environments. From the main view in most rooms, you can use the left analog stick to move around the room. Now let's review the lab equipment. There are several high-tech workstations, including the computer, the comparison microscope, and the assembly table. To display the evidence, press and hold the L1 button and press the down directional button. The evidence menu will appear. When you've got a piece of evidence you want to process, select the appropriate workstation for investigating it. Then select the desired evidence from the evidence menu. Every workstation has a specific purpose. Next, look towards any of the workstations and press the X button to get a closer look. To activate the microscope, you can upload an item from the evidence menu onto one of the panes. You'll have to visually compare the collected sample to the results before you draw your conclusion. Try it now. Very good. The Evidence Tagging Gameplay Assist feature helps you identify the process state of your evidence. 
If the evidence icon doesn't have a tag attached, that indicates that there's more to learn about it, while a red tag means the evidence has been completely analyzed. Other gameplay assist features can be enabled or disabled from the game options menu. Select the appropriate menu item and press the X button to further process your newly collected evidence. You can select a piece of evidence and put it into a viewing pane, then press the X button. You have completed all required tasks in this location. This is the office of Captain Jim Brass who works with your team. His job is to do all the police procedures you would need such as get clearance for search warrants or detain suspects to interview. To ask him a question, look towards him. The message talk will appear in the lower part of the screen. Press the X button and a dialog list with possible questions will be shown. Highlight the question and press the X button. What's up? Notice your case file has been updated. This means information has been added to your file on a suspect or victim. To view your case file, press and hold the L1 button, then press the right directional button. To bring up the case file, press and hold the L1 button, then press the right directional button to review the new information. The case file holds a summary of everything you've learned about victims and suspects. To switch between them, use the up directional button and the down directional button. To toggle between two suspects, use the left directional button and right directional button. To view your evidence, Trinity, go to Suspects, then press the circle button. The evidence, Trinity, is your guide to measuring progress. You must find evidence that links the suspect to the victim victim to the crime scene, and the crime scene to the suspect. You have now completed your CSI apprentice training. Well done. Feel free to return to this training module at any time to refresh your skills. You may now return to your investigation. Click the Options button on the bottom right of the screen, then click Main Menu.
Welcome to Vegas, the city without clocks, in the casinos at least. Here at CSI, time is something we pay close attention to because the early hours of a murder investigation. As our newest crime scene investigator, your credentials are strong, but the proof is in your performance. Yeah, we've got a situation over... Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. Catherine Willows, let me introduce you to our newest CSI. Now, what have you got for us? Our gallery owner by the strip with an unexpected exhibit on his showroom floor. A dead body. Possible homicide. Thanks, Kath. Okay, I'm partnering you with Warwick Brown on this case. He'll help show you the ropes. But your own CSI skills are what we're counting on to crack this case. Catherine, I have lab work to get back to. Would you supervise this case? You got it, Gil. And you should head to that art gallery now. Oh, and remember, as G.K. Chesterton once said, the criminal is the creative artist, the detective only the critic. Hey, I'm CSI Work Brown. I'm glad to have some help on this one. We got a dead Vic on the floor and a live gallery owner waiting in the sidelines. Are you ready? Good. Pay close attention. We're in the art world. And if you don't know how to look at something, you won't understand what it means. The Vic's face down. Spatter pattern on the wall close by indicates blunt force trauma. Take a photo of this. It's always good for future reference. You're going to need an angle that shows the Vic's position in relation to the spatter. Too pretty, too young, and way too dead. Pay close attention to the body. There could be evidence anywhere from head to toe. The blood flowed from the head wound and naturally pooled around her. That suggests she bled to death right here. No wallet, cash, or ID. Could this be a glorified mugging? A good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there.
Good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there. Hey, do you need a hint? I might be able to help you, but just a heads up. It could count against you in your evaluation. This is the Nathan Ackerman Fine Art Studio, and I am Nathan Ackerman. My art, displaying the creativity and on occasion the genius of my exhibitors in a setting that is itself a work of art. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? Please do. Consider me your host and ally. Don't hesitate to ask if I can help you resolve this, uh, this affair quickly and cleanly. I'll see what we can do. But Mr. Ackerman, there's nothing clean about murder. I was out briefly on an errand, and to my devastation, I discovered a client, Rachel Maddox, dead on my gallery floor. You must understand that this is a crushing blow. Rachel was an excellent client and a dear friend. I can't imagine who would do such a thing, perhaps a vagrant or one of these psychopathic killers you read so much about. My fingerprints are all over this gallery, both literally and figuratively. As I said, I intend to cooperate fully. My life is an open book. Rachel was about to be a bride. She had commissioned a painting and a sculpture, both of herself, for her wedding from one of my best artists. Unfortunately, he can also be one of my slowest artists, and Rachel and her fiancé were, well, let's say, fit to be tied that the art pieces, which were due some time ago, were not ready. I had an emergency overnight artwork delivery to ship. I needed to leave by 5 p.m., but Rachel was adamant we had to wait for the artist to come. I really should not let the two of them alone in the gallery, but they are, were, respectable clients. Anyway, Rachel, well, refused to leave. She said she was staying put just in case. I believe her words were, irresponsible ass of an artist does me the supreme favor of showing up. So that's how I came to leave the two of them here, and I had intended to be back before we closed at 6. As it was, it was 6.10 before I returned and found the door wide open and Rachel, Rachel in this terrible posture. As for her fiancé, uh, he was nowhere to be seen. This is the most ghastly thing that has ever happened at the Nathan Ackerman Fine Arts Studio. What kind of mad beast are we dealing with here? Her fiancé is one Mark Stock. A taciturn fellow with a physique worthy of a Greek sculpture and uh, just about as talkative. Frankly, he has the personality of a doorstop and the artistic taste of a hillbilly. Forgive my candor. The man does have his admirers. He's an ex-baseball player of some kind from the minor leagues, I believe. As I said, he was here with Rachel when I left, but when I returned, she was alone, undead. Yes, they were having an argument about the art, which was unusual as Mr. Stock had never expressed an opinion from the beginning. Now he was making a stand. He said it was foolish to make such a fuss, and the wedding could easily go on without the silly pieces. But Rachel wasn't having any of that. In Mr. Stock's words, he can sound rather shrill for such a strapping specimen of masculinity, he said Rachel had become unreasonable and out of control over the artist not showing up. And, well, honestly, he had a point. She did have that, that side to her. Understand, I was very fond of Rachel, but frankly, some of the invective she hurled was directed not just at her fiancé, but, if you can imagine, at me. Fortunately, a truce between the betrothed had come to pass before I had to leave. They were even, shall we say, affectionate. I felt comfortable enough leaving them alone. 
The storm had blown over, and they were like lovebirds again. To me, Mark Stock would be an enigma if he had a higher IQ. During their tiff, he seemed cold emotionally. He's one of those passive-aggressive types who occasionally erupt, but in a strange, distant way, unleashing a torrent of abusive language, but delivering that invective in a controlled, cruel manner, seemingly devoid of any feeling. They visit Vegas frequently, weekend getaways, on which they invariably stop by my gallery to do business. Rachel did so love art. What was the question? Ah, no, I have no address. They flew in for their wedding, and I have no idea at which hotel, though it will certainly be one of the pricier ones. Patrick Milton. Many of the works in this showroom are in fact his. He is not a critical darling, considered by some too commercial, 